Hi, this is Bob Schumacher. I'm here on the third of three webisodes about global user research. In the first one, we sort of covered off some of the reasons why one would want to do global research. And in the second one, we took a look at a few things that might impact the kinds of findings and the kinds of, of design elements that, that would impact user behavior. Um, in this third one here, we want to talk a little bit more about methodology and a little bit more about how you go about doing it. Um, and, and I think this is one where a lot of a lot of researchers get a little nervous because they don't even oftentimes know where to start. Um, and I'm going to begin this presentation with with a, a, a number, and that number is 80 percent. And what I mean by 80 percent here is that most of what we do, most of our time, energy, effort that we put toward doing global user user research, is spent not on the actual um, technical design of the study. It is on the planning and logistics that go into it. I mean, in, in any research effort, obviously, we, we spend a lot of time to make sure that we have the right participants in place, that we have the right time, date, location, um, all of the elements, the artifacts are working, the, the lab is set up, uh, you know, but hopefully we're not spending that much time because there's a lot more familiarity. But when we do things where we're going to go overseas, the, the risk is much higher. The, 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 the elements and areas where things can go wrong um, are, are much greater. Um, and we're just frankly out of our comfort zone. So um, a, a lot of what we do here is setting up the conditions to collect good data. That is the, the, the real principal thing. So essentially, um, we are creating the conditions. When we do this planning, we are creating the conditions to collect the highest quality data across many diverse environments. So, you know, it, really what we want to do is to be able to ask and answer the same questions everywhere. You know, obviously not in the same language, not in the same um, uh, 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 framework, but we want to be able to get to the same data because ultimately we want to see how this artifact performs with the with the user groups. So that means that we really have to, we've got to establish really good planning. We have to establish really good uh, communications. We've got to know the partners that we're going to work with. Um, but if we're going to be going, if we're going to be spending the time and energy to do this, we have to understand um, both, you know, uh, how researchers work in different countries, but also if we have to go there, there, we've got to know what sort of power cords we need. So it, it can be that sort of that, that sort of mundane. Um, you know, if you look at if you look at going to, to the developing world, it's possible that you may not have um, consistent power. Um, or if you go in uh, uh, monsoon season in, in India, it's very possible that um, things could get delayed by days if we're um, not um, properly prepared. So anyway, let's talk about the three basic models of doing uh, global research. The first is, you know, we could do it online. We could do it with um, remote testing. Um, and that is, uh, that's really a very viable option. If you've got a mobile, uh, if you've got a website um, and you can set up things like, um, you know, go to meeting or, or other screen sharing tools like Zoom, um, it's easy to sort of have a moderator um, and a uh, participant and do a uh, do a live interaction. You can also do it obviously with unmoderated tools like like user zoom. Um, and and these are very viable options. Um, but they will only take you so far. Um, and they're often very difficult to, uh, to to coordinate because you don't know what kind of environments people are working in. You don't know um, whether these are qualified individuals. Um, it's harder to do things like mobile device testing, for example, not impossible, um, or certainly physical devices. It's almost impossible to do this um, online through a remote testing uh, kind of framework. Um, next, let's take a look at, um, at another model, which would be uh, that we kind of stay put. We stay in our own place and we trust our partners. So I, I've got to set this up a little bit more by saying that if we decide that we need to test this artifact in in five countries, say we want to uh, we want to go to you know Brazil and China and Indonesia and France and the U.S. Um, and we have 
uh, partners in each one of those locations, we have to set it up so that we can send the uh, all of the information out, the screeners, the mod guys, the test plans, um, the, the overall um, uh, report structure, um, and assume that our partners are going to be able to decode that, and, and we really have to have good planning in order to do that well. Um, assuming that our partners can decode that, we send everything out, and they conduct the test as they normally would, um, and then they send us back the, the results, and they get integrated and, um, and summed up and provided in a, a, um, a report back to our, our stakeholders. Last, um, we go on site to our partners. And there are really, there are times when this is going to be important and times where it's, it may not be quite as, as important to do that. And we'll talk through a couple of those reasons, but, but oftentimes um, to get the best results, um, we will often need to go and, and watch the testing done ourselves in several countries. Now, remember that it is the, it, it is the quality of the research. It is the, uh, the kinds of questions that have to get asked and answered reliably that really determine um, the, uh, the, the, the work that we do and, and how we do it. So this is just one typical model of how we would do uh, a global research study. So we sort of start to the left and we're going to move to the right here. Um, the first thing, obviously, if, if the researcher, the researcher here is, is in blue um, and partners and, and uh, uh, folks that are we're going to encounter along the way um, are shaded otherwise. So if we look here first, the, 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 obviously we want to find out from our stakeholders what the requirements are. What do we really need to test and how do we need to test it? Um, and um, then make the determination, is this really a requirement? Do I know enough about the local market in order for me to be able to to, to um, do this without having to travel or do this online or do it in some other lower cost uh, method. Um, and, and actually, this is a pretty good place to sort of pause and say, at the end of the day, we have found that that global research, um, when, when we have to travel, is not incrementally that much more than just doing uh, several locations within the US, for example. Um, there are some differences, there are some difficulties, especially when you get into translators and having to do interpretations. Um, and obviously travel is a, is a key cost. Travel and time are key costs here. But um, the, the reality is you have to balance those things off, the cost and effort um, together with the benefit that you're gonna get. So you secure those requirements, you begin to make, make plans um, you build the test plan, you build the screener, you build um, the, the test protocol, um, and you want to conduct the pilot study. Now, during this phase also, um, you will want to have trusted partners. Um, we have trusted partners that we've used for, for 10 to 15 years in various parts of the world. Um, and so if we're going to those countries that we know well, um, we may not send somebody to that location, but if we're going to new places, that we haven't been to, um, we will probably want to send a, a, a researcher there to ensure that things are carried out in accordance with the way that, that we would uh, like that research to be done. Um, so some research has to be done here at some level to be able to ensure that we're getting uh, the right partners who are capable of doing this, this work. And that's a whole other series of, of discussions about how we find good partners, how we vet them, and, and how we assure that the, uh, the quality of work that we get is up to what we would expect. Um, so once we've developed all of these various and sundry things, um, we have briefings with our partners. Um, we will send them the screener, the test plan, the guide. Um, we'll send them the video of the pilot study. Um, we will go through as many of the elements as we can without physically being there. Um, and then um, showing them uh, what's really important um, in, uh, in getting the kind of data that we need to um, out of this. Um, at that point in time, once our partners have been briefed and once we've done um, some local uh, research, we will um, do the, conduct the field work in each of the markets 
Um, that may involve, as you note, the, the lower intensity gray figure in the upper part of this diagram. That would be an interpreter. Um, you'd have a researcher, and then you'd have a uh, You'd have a, a bold insight researcher in this case, and then you'd have a local researcher and a participant each carrying out the um, the research with um, the local partner and um, trying to ensure that we're getting through um, all of the elements of the, the guide um, and the study that's been laid out. Once the data are collected, um, oftentimes they will uh, be concentrated um, on the researcher or researchers who have visited each one of the local markets, they will concentrate and, and collect a, a single um, study document, a single research document um, report that will be delivered uh, back to the, um, the, the, the uh, sponsor um, in the uh, beginning of the process. So this is effectively how it works. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things that come to mind. Wow, this seems to take a long time. Um, it does not have to because these three, these three research elements in the center, for example, don't have to be done in series. They could be done in parallel, which is often how we'll, we do it. So we may actually send, we'll, during the briefing partner stage, we may brief um, three or four of our team and they go out to three different uh, locations. We've done studies with, with as many as, as 10 different locations, all simultaneously um, conducted at the same time. You know, obviously, that's an exception. However, um, there are a lot of different variations on this model that can accommodate both time, cost, effort, reporting requirements. All of those things are factors that we um, really spend time with our, our particular uh, clients and customers to ensure that we get that um, correct. I mean, for us, at the end of the day, it's the integrity of the research that matters more than anything else. And so we want to set up all of the conditions ahead of time to be successful. So I will leave this with one final thought. Um, we've been doing this long enough. We understand that in just about any case, in every case, this is, um, there are things that go wrong and things that we need to um, account for. And we will spend a, a great deal of time in planning and in thought um, and, uh, and, and uh, really digging into where things can go wrong and what we can do to mitigate the, the likelihood of error. So anyway, with that said, um, thank you so much for your time and um, reach out, I'd love to have a chat. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.